Who will make the Cowboys' final 53-man roster, and are there any surprise cuts that will happen by Tuesday? All that more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Cowboys. Locked on. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match. Up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out uh, on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, what's going on, sir? Uh, it's the week of cutdown. So we are all desperately scrolling through Twitter at every minute to constantly see all the changes. Well, whether it's doom scrolling or hope scrolling, it doesn't matter. You're you're seeing guys getting uh you know cut up from other teams, seeing if they're good fits for you, and maybe seeing some uh, of your own Dallas Cowboys getting cut uh, here before tomorrow's deadline. Yeah. So instead of doing a 53 man roster prediction, which everybody is doing right now, which is fine. We just have some questions about the roster players that we think are going to be on it, off it. We should mention the Cowboys have a lot of, what are we going to call it? Roster gymnastics that they're going to yes. do over the next 48 hours. You're going to see guys cut, join right back onto the team that are best veterans. They're going to do some moving guys to IR. That's why it's kind of pointless to do a 53 man roster prediction yeah. fight. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that, you know, we, we go through these and, and I, you know, I have a 53 man roster, but you, you, you realize that like, they're going to bring in guys from outside. They're going to, and, 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 you know, we, even, we have talked about it, like which 53 man roster are you doing? Are you doing the initial 53 man roster that gets done on Tuesday? Or are you doing the 53 man roster for, you know, week one, which uh, is what because, we should really care about. Right. Because yeah. that that's the more important thing. So we're going to focus on guys that we think, could be on the roster, off the roster before week one. I want to start with James Washington because we got some news on Monday that the Cowboys intend to put James Washington and Michael Gallup on the initial 53-man roster. That way they can move them to the injured reserve list um, and potentially get them back. Actually, excuse me. I think Michael Gallup is going to stay on the PUP. Is that correct? Or is he uh, going on the IR, IR list? I... I mean, I don't know at this point because I don't think he's on. I don't think he's on pup, right? Because he actually practiced in tra- in Oxnard, didn't he? He got hurt in Oxnard, so oh, I was thinking eligible. James. Well, excuse me, Michael Gallup. I think Michael Gallup's on. Oh, PUP. oh, no, no, Gallup. Yeah, Gallup's Gallup's going to be on the roster. I don't think that they'll okay. have any kind of designation once he actually yes. gets to week one. Thank you, because the, the goal for Michael Gallup is even if he misses the first two weeks of the season, yeah. They want him to be able to practice at least in some form. So that way, by week four or even by week five, like let's say he misses the first four games, he has three weeks of practice under his belt. So that's right. I got that one wrong. James Washington is the inter- interesting one because he's not going to be ready for a while. He's got a broken uh, what, fifth metatarsal. Yeah. So what's the point in keeping him on the active? I, I just I don't get it. I don't understand it either. And I, I, you know, I think the thing is, is that they have the ability you know, with some of these vested vets, especially the special teams guys, they have the ability to kind of do this roster gymnastic and get away with it, I think. But it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you know, look, it'd be one thing if, like, cutting him was detrimental, like, in a, uh, a dead money situation. That's not the case here. It's You're not really saving a ton of money no. either, but that's not really the point. The point is, why hold on to him until halfway through the season when you've got, I mean, if anything, you've got a, a, a roster filled with, wide receiver depth i mean you may not love necessarily where that middle part of the roster much as we've been talking about throughout training camp you may not love what your wide receiver two and three are currently looking like or you may like it but either way you've got four through seven or six or whatever pretty well figured out because you've got some talent there so my my impression is why bring washington back after 
I don't know, eight weeks if you're lucky. I mean, and then to, to have him, uh, a guy that we didn't necessarily love the signing of, come back after a fifth metatarsal break in season and, 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 and play, I would rather just continue to see what Noah Brown and, and, and Simi Fahoku are doing at that point. And maybe the idea is that you hold on to him just as an insurance policy. But, uh, you know, I guess – and I guess if you're really not worried about losing anyone, then it, it doesn't – you know, what's what's the harm? But to me – It, it, it just, just seems like it's just unnecessary because now, – I, I don't think you and I were all that thrilled about the the addition of James Washington. I think I was probably a little bit higher on him than you were. Maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, the guy's coming off a fifth metatarsal injury in surgery. Like, we know how that typically goes for these players. Like, it, it's it's a five- to six-month injury, like, until you're 100%. I, I just I don't understand. I, yeah, I'd rather just it- move on and ki- get somebody else. The point of having Washington in the first place was to provide some veteran stability early in the season when you didn't necessarily think you were going to have Gallup and you didn't really have any younger guys that would have been developed by then. By the time that he gets back, all your younger guys will have played half a season of football. Why not continue to let them play? And again, maybe they do. Maybe they, 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 he comes back off of the IR and they cut him and it's, it's goodbye. And it was all just an insurance policy And, and that's fine. It just doesn't seem worth the gymnastics to me. I 100% agree. Uh, all right, let's get to some more roster questions. But before we do that, I want to tell you about prize picks. All you have to do is pick two to five players. And if they go, if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on an entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on just about any sport you watch. That includes, get ready for this. NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, wow. men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. It's a lot of sports that you can uh, you can bet on. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Plus, they have safe and fast fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. All you have to do is download the Prize Pick app or go to Prize Pick to sign up right now to play daily fantasy sports. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so easy to do. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Pick is going to give you $100. If you deposit $50, I'll give you 50. It's really that easy. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, let's uh, let's talk about the quarterback situation. Obviously, yeah. Dak, the Cowboys released Ben Denucci. We think Cooper Rush is going to be the number two quarterback. Do the Cowboys keep a third? Yeah, I think they do. Uh, I, I, I don't know if necessarily – you know, again, with roster gymnastics, how that will work out. Quarterbacks are a little bit more treacherous trying to cut uh, a, a quarterback to get him through the roster. But, there, you know, there's – It's Will Greer in this case. Like, he, he wasn't so good in preseason that you have to worry about somebody stealing him. Yeah, I, I, th- I think I tend to agree. And I think with the Cowboys, you know, they would love to have seen Will Greer. I, I think the, the groin injury was just very unfortunate. You know, I think it, 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 it set him back a week. And, and then beyond that, he was injured past that too. Uh, it just it robbed the Cowboys with the opportunity to really get a good look at him with uh, uh, you know higher quality players to get an equal look at him as he, they did with Rush, and then you know he had he did have an opportunity to kind of you know catch up and close the door on Rush I think in that third preseason game, and he was kind of up and down and and I think you know again to just to give him some credit it, it he was just coming off of this injury he still doesn't feel 100. percent I think he was trying his best, you know, to to to, to try to take that that job by the by the by the hold, and it just didn't work out for him. So I, I think the Cowboys would love to keep him and continue to develop him because I think yes. he has upside to be the the future backup. But I just don't think you can feel confident enough in what he's done so far to release Cooper Rush. My guess is that Greer will be one of the guys that the Cowboys cut Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, but he'll be back on the roster before Week One. For a couple of reasons. Number one, Mike McCarthy always likes to keep three quarterbacks on the roster. It just helps with practices and all that kind of stuff. And number two, you can have that guy dressed on game day, but not part of the active roster, right? So you technically get an extra body out there. I, I think that's something that they're going to do. It's just, 
we'll see when Wilger is actually on the 53 man roster. It might not happen till the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I would not at all be surprised if <laughs> Danucci found his way back onto that practice squad as well. And which he should be. I, to be clear, I, I, I thought, thought he played Danucci great. Was, yeah. I thought he was much better this year. I think he deserves another chance to be I agree. a practice squad quarterback. And maybe what you do is next year, your quarterback situation is Dak, Will Greer, and Ben DiNucci. Like I, I could see that working out. He's shown some development, you know, sure. which is I think more than a lot of us expected. If as long as he's getting better and it's not costing us a ton, I mean, you got to have like a, a practice squad quarterback. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, all right, let's talk about some of the offensive linemen. Uh, Matt, well, let's go. Do you think he makes the 53 man roster? Yeah, I think he does. I mean, I, I think the question becomes: Do they? Have they seen enough to keep him off one of their lists? I, I mean, I think likely at this point, you this know what? I'm going ba- to because... back up a little bit Go because ahead. I don't know for sure. Like, I, you know, like I, I think the, the whole practice in the game, I, I think was really kind of a, uh, a, a, a tryout to see they're keeping him. I, I think that that's the bottom line. It's just the question how is, they keep him. Yeah. Right? The question is, are you healthy enough to even play at all this season? If you are, then maybe we keep you on the roster, put you on like short term IR, or you know, and then figure out what to do with you once you're healthy. Or if you're not, if you go out there and they just didn't like what they saw on tape, or they didn't like what they saw in practice, and they just don't think he can contribute at an NFL level right away, then IR him now. There's no reason to not IR him and can, well, to, to waste all the t- roster gymnastics. Can I give my tinfoil hat theory here? Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be on the roster week one. I and tend then, to think that too, honestly. And, and then, then I think put he's going to go on. Yeah, because what will ha- my guess is what's going to happen is they'll get through week one. That's when they'll bring in a veteran tackle, right? To, to basically Agreed. they could pay week by week. And then let's see how healthy Well, let's go is in week five, week six, week seven. And that's probably when you bring him back. But that's kind of my guess here. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense on both fronts, right? Like you're not going to want to sign a tackle before week one. You're 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 you need to keep well. Let's go on the roster till week one in order to properly slot him into the IR for return. Just a quick reminder for everyone out there because this part is a little confusing. You can IR a player before the first set of roster cuts out on Tuesday, but if you do that, they are on the permanent IR situation. They yeah. cannot come back from the reg- in the regular season. So if you want to IR them with a return option, there, there's no restriction on the number of those anymore. The only restriction you do have is that it, they have to be on the roster week one. So you can't Ross IR them before the season and then hope to bring them back later yes. without bringing them on the roster at first. Uh, all right, let's move to the defensive line. Do we in- – Vision any surprise cuts there? Like, is there any chance? There's going to be some movement here, right? There's got to be. There's just got- too many. Yeah. There's too many bodies. Either somebody's going to get cut, or somebody's going to get traded for something, either a player or a, a, a mid round, late round pick. I just feel like there's too many bodies that have done too much good stuff to simply. I mean, even all the way down to Brunson, who is going to get cut. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he's shown you something, and 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 basically everyone above him has, short of maybe Ridgeway. Josiah Brunson, by the way. Yeah, Josiah Brunson, number 94. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think everyone above him has shown you something maybe short of Ridgeway, which, you know, he was a draft pick. So I think that they're going to have to figure out either some roster mechanisms to hold on to one of these guys, maybe work out a trade with a willing team for a piece that you need or for a draft pick. There's just too many of these guys. And and so, I, I mean, I think. I'll throw out some names that could be up for shenanigans. And I don't, again, I don't know if these are trades or cuts or whatever, but uh, uh, Basham, uh, Hill, I think. Uh, the the uh, Basham, I was talking to a couple of Cleveland Dante Brown. Fowler, I think maybe. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Fowler would be really interesting. I, I was talking to a couple of Cleveland Brown people that they, the Browns desperately need like a third edge rusher. They've just been decimated with injury. I'm like, Basham's the perfect guy for that. His base salary is 1.75 million this year. He's a good player against the run. I, I still think he should have a role with the Cowboys, but I can see him being very intriguing to other teams at that price. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, if the Cowboys hold on to him, I, I love it. I'm gonna be happy. I, I like that. He's a great he's a part player. of have. He's a great player to have in this on this kind of defense in in a rotation, right? He can play a bunch of different spots. He's kind of like the more defensive in version of Tyre of Crawford, right? 
where he can play inside and outside, but mm-hmm. he's more of an outside guy. He can kick inside and rush the passer a little bit if you need him as a defensive tackle. But he can play both left and right side. He'll give you solid rushes. He's not he's not spectacular, but he's he's definitely better than average for like a rotational def- down down rotation defensive end. So yeah. and he and he really you know, he really showed out all throughout the preseason and training camp. So uh, yeah, if if somebody wants to come offer more than we're more than we're willing to not part with uh, i'll certainly trade him but uh i certainly would be thrilled to keep him on the roster as well and have him be part of a very what's now a seemingly a very healthy rotation of defensive end the other guy i'm keeping an eye on john ridgeway the defensive tackle that the yeah. cowboys selected this year we were a little underwhelmed with his performance this year but we know how much the cowboys value the draft picks they want to be patient and Listen, their patience has paid off a lot of times. Like Israel Makama was a six-round pick last year, didn't do a lot in training camp or the preseason, yep. made a leap. Uh, well, Quinn Bohana. Bohana I mean, that's the same the, way. I was just going to say, that's the, the reason that this guy is becoming potentially expendable is because the guy that they drafted last year yep. that, to, to be that kind of guy has stepped up in a way that we definitely did not expect, Quinn yes. Bohana. So yeah, I think that's a huge showing as to maybe why you want to figure out a way to keep this guy uh, but the question is how? How well, and that's where I wonder. I, I've seen teams, especially the Cowboys, do this where they'll keep him on the initial 53 man roster and then they might release him on Thursday or Friday after everybody kind of has their roster set, set their so rosters. That, yeah. So that way, that way, they're, you're just taking out the teams that could potentially make a waiver claim for him. I, I wonder if that's something that the Cowboys would be interested in because I just I don't know. Not yet, I do know. He's not one of their 53 best players at this point, yeah. right? And I don't know if you can bring that into your week one roster. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they do there. Somebody's going to step step wrong or something, you know, twist that ankle. It's gonna be like, ah, we'll see. Ugh, but we got to practice today. Today's <sighs> practice might be a tough one. I gotta, I've got to imagine. Yeah. Uh, I, I got a question about the linebackers. So, yeah. Jeez. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's let's not talk about Damone Clark. We'll save about him for a second. Oh man, I, De- I mean, David yeah. Jones said something that I I just can't wrap my That's brain still re- still messing with our heads at, at yes. this point. Yeah. All right. So linebacker is a tough one because yeah, it's Micah Parsons, it's Leighton Vander Esch, it's Jabril Cox, and it's Anthony Barr. Those are the only four guys that I know for sure are going to be on the roster. Then it comes yeah. down to how many are they keeping. And are you keeping like Luke Gifford? Are you keeping Devin Harper? Because I put out a tweet the other day about, Hey, I think Luke Gifford's improved. I think he should be on the roster over Devin Harper and people flipped out. So what's your read in the linebacker position here? People flipped out that they thought that Luke Gifford was, they think Luke Gifford was not having a good training camp. No, they they think it's crazy that Devin Harper's not on the roster over Luke. Oh, I mean, Honestly, my 53 man roster has neither of these those guys. And, and, see, and, that's and, what I'm wondering if they're just gonna say, nope, we'll we'll good with or we're good with whatever guy makes it back to the practice. Look, club. I mean, part of the reason that you have a Luke Gifford or a Devin Harper on your roster is to f- facilitate special teams, right? But this team is just filthy with safeties that can play special teams and corners that can play special teams. Frankly, they've got two or three wide receivers who I have making the team that can all play special teams. So and and on top of that, you're gonna keep you're likely going to keep CJ Goodwin, I think, or we can have a whole conversation about that if you want. Uh, but they're definitely keeping Kevontae Turpin, who they're trying to work a role in, in as wide receiver. But let's be clear, like that's mostly a special teams keep. How many of these guys is is Bones going to get? Like how many guys, uh, you know, and I think that Luke Gifford's played some pretty decent defense. It's not like he hasn't been, uh, you know, a, a part of the defense or he hasn't been useful on defense. But I just think, you know, when given the deference to special teams players, I've already got a long list of those guys, right? That that are definitely going to make the team and definitely going to have a role on special teams. And I think beyond that too, like we've talked about, three of these safeties can play linebacker in some form mm-hmm. or fashion, right? Again, making that position kind of uh, uh, expendable, or at least the the type of player that you're on there uh, having expendable. So. I would not at all be surprised if the initial, you know, Tuesday 53 man roster only had four linebackers on it. And then I kind of as, at this point. And then after the, the 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 regular season starts, you know, I don't I just don't imagine Luke Gifford necessarily signing someplace else. 
So I maybe well, you bring let's him. be clear. He was a free agent for a long time. Yeah. And the Cowboys were the only team to bring him back. Yeah. We should also remember, I'm going to point this out. They've changed the way that the practice squad yes. rules are now where yeah. you can bring a guy up from your practice squad and then you can put him right back down after game day. I wouldn't be surprised like if Devin Harper's the perfect candidate for that, right? Like, hey, we're going to need you for some extra special teams reps this week because this guy's out, you know, let's say CJ Goodwin's out or whatever, right? I think Harper's a good candidate for that. And by the way, I think he did play his best game of the preseason against yes. Seattle. I, th- I thought he looked he significantly better. better than what we saw. And, and and I'll add another change in the rules to the practice squad that that helps Gifford is that they have also changed the uh, the practice squad rules to – not be as oriented towards younger players. Like that can be they lifted guys. the yep. the veteran restrictions on 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 who yep. can play special teams. So meaning not that Gifford was necessarily up for that eligibility or anything, but I think that it helps what him, you just right? what you just described, I think could also apply to yes. Gifford, right? Where if if you don't get Harper, maybe maybe some other team had had him higher on their draft board. They saw that he gets cut. They realize he's a Cowboys draft pick they claim that guy or, or they decide to sign, or maybe he decides that he doesn't want to come back to the Cowboys because the, the, there's not as much opportunity. Gifford is just a, is just a vi- as viable option here as Harper. If, if you wanted to do something similar with him on the practice squad. All right. We've got a few more things to talk about, but before we do that, I want to have to tell you about a PSA from NHTSA. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive high? What's the worst that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit. It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction time slows way down when you're high. You're not only putting yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you're using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high. Get a DUI. All right. uh, Let's just talk about Damone Clark really quickly. Stephen Jones on Monday said that the Cowboys are going to put him on the injured reserve list set to return. I don't know if he misspoke there because the Cowboys could put him on PUP as he's not practiced yet. But to me, the, the more, more important takeaway is Cowboys seem like they're telling us that he's going to play this year. It's just yeah. a matter of when, not if. I think that that's without dispute. I mean, I, I think they've been implying that heavily for almost since he was drafted, frankly. And then and 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 kind of even doubled down a little bit a few weeks after that when we got uh, our first kind of reports. And again, you know, kind of going to the conversation that we've talked that we were talking about on Twitter with someone about Gallup. <clears throat> Demo Clark has been with Gallup this entire time. Like they basically are on the same recovery track. It appears uh, they're both they both were on the cords at the same time. They mm-hmm. both you know were were working out with Britt Brown similarly at the same time. You know, and I that has informed our thought process with Michael Gallup, and look look how that paid off. We've just got confirmation that he's not being pupped, so that to me reads like he's coming back sooner than later, as we it's, as we've indicated. It's a little bit different with Damone Clark because it's a neck surgery, so the, sure, there's, yeah. there's going to be a you know a time where it's a safety issue too, right? right? Like that, right. that's that's a huge part of that is that he's got a clear threshold that are not just about comfort; they're about like yeah, you know, safety. Sure, so. I think it's interesting. You're right. Like the thing that we're kind of turning over and over in our head is why would they IR him to return when he could, is eligible for the pup since he was on pup to start the, the, the training camp, which again, just to guys kind of refresh the rules here. You cannot go on regular season pup unless you were on preseason pup. Uh, and, and so he, he is eligible for that which means he doesn't count towards the roster, which means you can put him on that pup list without ever having to put him on the roster. So the thing that I guess we're trying to get at is that he doesn't need to count towards the roster at all. Even the initial 53 man roster, if they just pupped him, what we were trying to figure out before we started the show is what's the difference between in season pup and IR to return. And from everything that I could see, it didn't seem like there was a huge issue. A huge I change. wonder if it's a practice thing, right? That's like, that's what I. That's the only thing I could come up with is that maybe you have a, a larger window uh, to evaluate the player with IR to return. But I, I can't find. I couldn't think of anything else. Really, is that, that's the only thing. I wonder, like, if PUP is a little bit more restricted and when you can practice and that kind of stuff. We'll see. That's just something to keep keep an eye on over the next couple of weeks. All right. 
really quickly before we go. I'm going to name a bunch of players. You just tell me if they're on the week one roster. I don't care about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but on the week one roster when the Cowboys get ready to play Tampa Bay. Dennis Houston. On the roster. Okay. Simi Fahoku. On the roster. Okay. Uh, Marquise Bell. On the roster. Tyler Coyle. Not on the roster. Luke Gifford. On the practice squad, called up. Okay. John Ridgeway. I'm going to say on the roster, but maybe in a special category. Calvin Joseph. On the roster. I wonder if he's a guy that could go on the injured preserve list. Maybe. I mean, remember, he suffered a concussion, concussion. in the preseason game. Maybe the Cowboys put him on the initial 53 man roster, put him on IR. He'll miss four games, and then here you have him back later. But that one, I could see the Cowboys doing something like that because a, a wide variety of outcomes there. I, and I could see them IR, IR, IRing him for the regular season. It's I possible. mean, if. You know, they, they, there's been so many whispers about him being cut. Like maybe they feel like another year to just fully develop. The know, reason why I don't think they're going to want him to do that, I, I still think they're going to want him on the roster around practice and around the facility. That's fair. And the other, the other thing that to consider there too is that this is his third year, right? Second, second year. Second year. Okay. So yeah, they're. I mean, they need to get solid looks at him before yeah. his fourth year comes up. So yeah, maybe you're right. Nation Wright on the roster. Deron Bland. That one sounds you know obvious, but on the roster, playing in week one. Uh, I th- I mean I th- I think he's been good enough to have a role. Uh, that's yep. about it. Terrell Basham. We kind of mentioned he's a guy that could be traded, but I think you and I both kind of hope he makes the team. Uh, yeah, or that we get something for him. I I yeah. I, I, I don't want to just cut him. Yeah. Uh, that's basically it. Peyton Hendershot. I think it's kind of a foregone conclusion, right? Yep. Uh, though this one hurts my soul to, to say it. Sean I think McEwen? it's yeah. I think it's a legit question at this point. Uh, the injury, the injury's been not very well timed for him. Well, to be fair, he's missed a lot of time with injuries now over the last couple of years, right? He's just yes. he's had a hard time staying healthy. Maybe you can IR him. You know, I mean, you like the player, but I think you're right. Like the injury was ill timed, especially with. Inner shots rise, or maybe it was very well timed so that he could be put on the the IR list. I don't know, but I think that yeah, as far I, as I his think, spot on the roster, I think he's a great guy to put on IR, right? Because they don't need him now. Like I, yeah. as much as I love McEwen, they don't need him now. Where they might need him is like in week ten when one of your tight ends goes down because we know these tight ends hit hit a rookie wall. Maybe that's when you need him to come back and help do some blocking stuff. But yeah, I. I did a quick mock up for my 53 man roster and he wasn't on it. So, I, you know, it's funny. Don't say I'm I, not biased. I, I could be unbiased. I'm just you, you saying. Certainly, I, I, I think it's weird because you look at all the guys that you like to stash in some way. But the problem is, is how many of these vested veterans that you can convince to like sign back with the team do you really have? Like, there's only a certain amount of those slots before you start. Well, actually risk exposing some of these guys we the, can go through it really quickly like I, I i've got the names it's brett marr yep sure uh it's jake mcquade the the yep. long snapper cj goodwin mm-hmm. noah, brown. noah brown right yeah noah brown i just the noah brown ones where it's a little bit too far for me well i mean again i guess you know the idea is that yeah, because I, mean, I could see a situation. Noah Brown's getting paid absolutely nothing right now for the Cowboys. He's getting paid one million. What if Washington, who's had yep. some, you're like, hey, we're going to give you two million, and we're going to yeah. steal the number two receiver away from the Cowboys? Yeah, absolutely. That's what's scary about this a little bit. He's the one where I think that's that's being the, a little bit too cute for me. Those three are the only ones I feel comfortable with, right? Yeah. Wait, well, did you include C.J. Goodwin in there? Yes. Yeah, so good, Goodwin, uh, kicker, long snapper. And punter, right? So that's four. Yeah, isn't they, they it take anger, a little. Isn't, or is yeah, Mar they, not a they, Mar not? They, my they take a little bit of a cap hit, cutting anger. Oh, okay, okay. So really, you can't really. You shouldn't. You know, like, so it's, they, it's a it's a it's a one point six million dollar cap hit. To so cut him. how many how many players as it stands right now are you are potentially being discussed as? And this week we can finish with this. How many players are are, are discussed are being discussed as? 
going through roster gymnastics, meaning being on the roster week one with potential to, uh, you know, revert to a, one of these lists before the regular Four, season. We, we right. got well. Let's go. We've already heard about Washington, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, we yeah. just mentioned Sean McEwen. We've mentioned uh, Deron Bland. We don't know exactly what what's going Calvin on Joseph. there. So that's Kelvin Joseph. That's five. Um, quite a bit. You know, maybe yeah. You mentioned well. Let's go. I, it's why roster predictions are kind of crazy. But what about? Here's a wild one for you. What if the Cowboys just kept one quarterback on their initial 53 man roster? It, I, it wouldn't shock me. I mean, because I just it don't seems know. Like a smart a move. I just don't know. That, yeah, exactly. Or either of those two quarterbacks. So, yeah. uh, you know, I saw that they, they, the, who is it? Miami cut Skylar Thompson, who had a fantastic uh, uh, preseason. So there's guys on the, on the street that are hotter commodities than your oh, quarterbacks. Yeah. So yeah. maybe they can pass it through. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen today. Now make your second listen to Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Find the intellectual fantasy expert, Vinny Iyer, who brings over 20 years of NFL experience in a unique angle to give you the moves no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy draft with Locked On Fantasy Football. Landon, you and I will be back on Wednesday to talk about all the moves the Cowboys have made. We'll see if they make any trades, if they've added a veteran offensive tackle. So make sure you're downloading, subscribing to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also, check us out over on YouTube. You can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. I am at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll see you guys next time.